Okay, so one thing I wanted to work on on this truck is I wanted to clean up some of this random wiring going on with it and stuff I didn't know what it does. I try to find out why it's there. Why? So one of the first ones was this red wire, random red wire, we'll call it, with a connector on the end there. And it was going around here towards the firewall and it went way down in there and looked like it had maybe originally went inside somewhere but I couldn't find it inside so I just pulled on it and it is disconnected so that was gone and then one of the other things I noticed was there's a couple wires coming in here to this panel right here we take that cover off right here and this one kind of looks factory but this one here is not because at least it doesn't look like it because it's going in to the firewall with no grommet around it and it goes inside right here can't work comes around it's coming from up there and it comes over here it's got a cheap old connector on it and then it's kind of going up here and there's a bundle here it's been tie wrapped into the into the uh, dash frame and then there's a ground with another cheap old connector so there's our infamous mode door actuator this looks like it may have been replaced once I hope not I guess I'll be replacing but anyway so there's another I think there's gonna be some bad news in this dashboard when I get this cluster apart which I'm not doing right now but this is a cheap Chinese head lamp which I hardly ever use as a headlamp it works pretty good so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check this. This should be. I'll leave this one alone until I know what it is. But this one, I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take my meter and, and check see if that's live. I bet it is. And then I'm going to start. I think what that was, I think that's a trailer connector, a trailer brake controller connector, a wiring for, for one of them. But anyway. I don't know. It's not if it was. It's not there now, and so I'm going to start. I'm going to take that wire loose there if it's got power to it, and then we're going to start pulling that out. And I can just pull that blue wire out from inside there and just kind of leave this stuff sort of, sort of uh, kind of tied up here and all that kind of safely until I have reason to use it or know what it is. This one, like I said, I don't know, that looks pretty, that looks like a factory connector, so that may need to be there. Somebody may already know what that is, and they're telling me, hey, don't, don't mess with that, don't mess with that. Anyway, I'm not going to mess with it. So, but the rest of this, and the other one too, probably got some wiper motor problems because, in that or the switch, because there's a ground on here that's tied in to the wiring to the motor with a scotch lock. Of course that's not supposed to be there so apparently the only way the motor is operable is with it directly grounded and makes me think that the, something inside here in the, in the in the truck is responsible for grounding that but I was able to pull up a wiring diagram so that's good that will help me tremendously we'll find out what's what the heck to knock that loose when I was all right guys well that's about it I'll, I'll uh this is probably gonna be a a much larger video I think I'm getting into these much larger videos of just fixing some things on this I want to get into the air conditioner and see what's up with that so we can get that brought back to life and then find out why the ABS lights on which that may be really bad news that may be this this thing up here is uh, crapped out 
my luck it'll be this thing crapped out any other time it would be just a wheel speed sensor <laughs> but that's okay all right so i'll let you know what i find out with some of this stuff okay let's check out our pile of random wire one pile there's a piece there's another piece there is the hunk of it i got out from under the dashboard this is another part that was going into the dashboard so I was correct a scotch lock. I was correct about that. That was a trailer brake connector. That's what these wires are. So I'm leaving them there. But I cut off the one that's going inside for now. In, in there. And sure enough, that's what it is. Because you come back to the back. And there they are. Right here. And a third one that was in there too, I think. But anyway, so that's probably them, and that's for the trailer brakes. So I'm going to leave them there. This I'm thinking that I may have to end up replacing these wires here. This deal, look at this. How did somebody do this? There's two different sets of crimp connectors on a length of wire like that. Now, I thought these things had a breakout in them. So you could just put a, if I, I thought I remembered that, that you just separate this and put a, connector in a T connector that just that has your harness made onto it. I thought they did that to make the wiring clear. Maybe not. I see a ground here. Where's that going? It's going into something there. What's wrong with this camera? Anyway, so And that was part of that stuff that was under the dash that was grounded for the bolt. So I still got to figure that out. All right, I'm in pressure washing this afternoon, and I got tired of that. So I thought I'd come out here and work on a few more things. So one thing, I was messing around with stuff, seeing what worked and what didn't. And no locks, no power locks anywhere. So... I was doing some reading on the wiring diagrams and turns out there's a fuse for that. I think there's maybe a relay also somewhere, but there's definitely a fuse that's involved with it. And that's this fuse here. The one right back here at fuse 13. So I've already had this apart and checked it, but now I'm gonna bring you along and see, show you what's going on here. When I pull the fuse out. what it's blown hard to believe in it but it is blown right up so i'm going to do some checking before i just sacrifice another fuse i'm going to do some checking around because this deal over here is concerning that's the cigarette lighter and the ashtray assembly, which as you can see has been broken somehow back in there and just kind of hanging loosely. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to take my meter. I'm going to check in and see if we got ground anywhere. And if, it, if it's not grounded out, then I go ahead and try a fuse in it to see if this gets anything going because it could have just been somebody overloaded something. I'm sure something was plugged into there often now. People depend on the power outlets. But, uh, or, or something was dropped in it. Kid put something in it like a coin or something. So we'll see. So what's going on. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, I checked through all this with my meter. And there's no sign of anything being grounded. So I checked the fuse outlet and it had power to it on one side like it should. And so I tried a 15 amp fuse just to sacrifice it first in case it blew, which it didn't. And then I went ahead and put the 20 amp fuse that's supposed to be in there. The, the other one was a 15, it was the wrong one anyway. So. Now we got door locks, power door locks. All it was, was a fuse. That's all it was. 
All right, move on to something else. All right, here's another good one. So, looking at this deal with this wiper motor, and it had some add-on ground wire into the ground circuit. It's into this black wire down here. It's scotch locked in, and I checked the wiring diagram on the internet for this vehicle, and that black wire grounds directly to the back of the the passenger side cylinder head, and that's all it does. It's got. It also serves as a ground for this thing here, the wiper washer motor, and so. Uh, anyway, I don't know what was going on. Somebody thought that this wiper motor, this wiper motor, when you turn it on, it makes some crazy sounds and doesn't work right away. I've had a long experience with these things, and 99.9% nine, .9 of the time, that's in the wiper motor because I think that thing's got a board in there. That's the motor part of it, and then there's a gearbox, but somewhere in there, I believe there's a logic board. And that's usually always responsible for any kind of issues with these things. So, anyway, I checked this. I've taken this plug apart because I was suspicious that that, can you believe they used a red wire for a ground? That even makes it better. I was suspicious that this thing was unnecessary, that somebody had just been taking a shot in the dark because they didn't know what they were doing. They thought they did, but they didn't. And so I thought I'd get the meter out and see if that ground wire actually grounded. So we're going to test the meter. Turn up his finger. It's a hawk family that's living behind us over here now. Yeah. She was, uh, he and she were taking baths in the bird bath yesterday morning. The birds are scattering. They don't like those things. So anyway, back to what we're doing here. So test the meter, make sure the meter's working. Yes, so I've got set on ohms. So anyway, this thing should beep at us if it's got a clear path to ground. It's a connector right there in the center. And it's fine. And this add-on is not connected anymore. It was up here to the it was up here to the bolt on the wiper motor so this is just nothing but another redneck repair that wasn't a repair that was a guess at this they didn't know what they were doing they didn't check the wiring diagram maybe they did but they didn't do the most simple thing is take a meter i guess nobody that does this stuff ever understands how to use a, a, a an electrical test meter they didn't do what i did and take the meter out here and check it to see if that was actually a problem Okay, so we're on to another repair. This time, it's this rear door. Pull on the handle, nothing happens. So, took the inside of it off so I could get to the latch in there. And with enough persuasion, sometimes you can get it to open. My manipulating the rod that goes up to the top up here. So it's pretty simple. What's what you have here? You have in there you have a rod which you probably can't see very well. Hang on a second. Okay, sorry. So anyway in there you have oh a latch assembly and normally from the factory the rod there on that end is not held in with bailing wire and then up here you have the other end of it which is right here and there again it's not held together with bailing wire that someone's lame attempt to get this to operate again which was a bad idea and didn't work so I have the proper clips to rework that so that's what we're gonna do 
Also, the door check strap is broken. I don't have one of those, so we'll have to delay that for now. But, all right, so we get a clips, and I'll show you what they look like, and then show you what they look like installed, and then hopefully the latch works. All right, so these should be the guys right here. That's the number on them. Seven five four three two. Nice and pink. So. I think those per pack were like six dollars. So, of course, that's more expensive than if you have baling wire. But we're not doing any more baling wire here. All right, so I get those put on. I also picked up some clips to replace the ones that broke on this. Let me put that panel back on the door. Yeah, so on further examination. I've discovered a couple things here. One, this latch is loose in here. So the bolt's loose. And the second thing is I'm not I'm not so sure this isn't something they did put on from the factory as much as I laughed at it. But you look in here at this and i mean there's no reason for it to you know that's captive that rod is captive i don't see there being a clip on it clip won't fit on that but this is what was in it on the bottom i replaced the clip some bailing wire and they wrapped electrical tape around the end of the rod so this is the rod clip that's supposed to be in there it kept saying there was supposed to be two, but I don't believe that. I think that's right. And it's certainly not the most durable looking deal either, but whatever. But I think this, I think there might be a combination of things going on that this rod is too loose. So I don't know about that. I can't find a picture of this. So let me, let me work the whole thing's loose. Look at that. Yeah. All right, let me work on this. Okay, I think I got it. It was just a few things kind of conspiring all together. I've determined that this little wire clamp is original because the rod that goes to the bottom clamp also has that. So I adjusted, I tweaked these I tweaked this thing. This is a latch for the doors. It's just one one latch on the left door. It's all there is. And didn't mess with that one, but uh, did that. I gave this thing a good lube job with some uh, fluid film and put some more on it. And just kind of messed around with it. And then I still really wasn't getting uh, a good smooth release with it. So I just went in there with my tool and just gave each of those rods a little tweak -a which in effect shortens them so now I think we're good to go that's exactly how it should work so and the reason why I did the upper one is because I was looking at this there's really not much adjustability in this latch assembly so I just kind of carefully tweak this one downward a little bit till I got it where it would it, because it sounded like it was hitting hitting the latch up there too high so anyway that's got that fixed I believe so I have a spare clip I'll just keep that until the next one breaks or if it never breaks I'll give it to the next owner so I still got to do a check strap but now I can put the clean this up and put the uh, what's left of the weather seal back on it and then put the door put the door panel back on so there you go if you have having rear door problems with one of these look at the adjustment and look at the clips and all that first and don't do some kind of a wank job like this on it just go buy the damn clip it'll take you less time 
put this clip in that it will to take a piece of war and wrap it around and all that garbage and it'll work so anyway not saying that was all the problem but it didn't help anything all right well i'll put that together and we'll move on to something else well as much as i like things that are zip tied back together like this ashtray i guess i will uh See if I can fix this. It's not for me. It's for the people that ride with me. You know, they may be disturbed by that. So I went over and took the fuse back out over there with a cigarette lighter. Or a cigarette lighter, however you pronounce it. So if something goes wrong here, it won't blow the entire vehicle up. Got real problems here. And you notice, again, that... When you put these zip ties on there, they zip tied the ashtray itself into this assembly, so you cannot get the ashtray out without taking the zip ties out. And again, it's just one of those things where I'm I'm still trying to understand why that GM didn't just do this. Why did they waste their time and money with screws and all that crap? So let's take this apart with my handy side cutters and see what happens when we cut the suspension here. Uh, still, still staying up there. Ah, uh, well, I don't know. I don't. Know. I think I could live with that. It might have been a rash decision to put zip ties on it. Uh, looks like something I would have done in the past. Actually, it looks like something I would do now to put something like my trellis up. Or I don't want to dig into the stuff. So here we are with a random wire, which is not connected to anything. It's just tied itself. So apparently, oh, I know what it is. That was version one, one point over there. That was that was what they tried first to get this thing to to stay up. And then when that didn't actually work as well. Because they wanted, maybe they couldn't get the correct tension on it. Well, they, they redneck engineered it in their mind how to do this. So, let's take that one out. What kind of wire we got here? What was that jumper cable wire? I don't know. It's garbage can stuff to me. So, alright, so this thing, this thing is just essentially just hanging here by its outlets so let me oh, I can tell you already this thing is not salvageable but, all right, let me take the plugs off and we'll see what we got so just to uh, unclip those wires very easily and they come right off sorry for the wash out there and that chunk of stuff that part of the ashtray is there and so i was looking in here to see what's left in here and obviously there's another part of this ashtray that's this black plastic housing and i was looking to see how that possibly comes out and there are these little four little spots there's one there there's one down right where the white the light is and there right there and there and you can pull those out and when you pull them out like a little locking tab this stupid light again but a little locking tab comes out and apparently that will retain that I just pulled it with a pick so let me let me go ahead and work on that and we'll see if we can get that part of it out and see how much is actually broken which I'm thinking is going to be all in it. All right, well, as expected, this job is beginning to snowball quickly. <laughs> so I got the ashtray out, the remaining, the, the upper portion of it, which is this thing here. And it's just an incredibly flimsy piece of stuff here, which GM should, <laughs> well, if it was anybody but GM, or if it was anybody but a domestic manufacturer, they'd be ashamed of this, but they're not, of course, because it's just plenty of repair for them if they ever get to do it. But 
what I ended up having to do is I had to end up taking this knee bolster off the plastic over it rather and this is it over here it's in pretty good shape got a little crack right here I'm moving around I can see the crack opening it up and it's <laughs> filthy I don't know what all that is I don't even want to think about that but it's nasty so uh, anyway once I did that that gave me access to just go ahead and take that all out so I pulled it out just kind of moved it down and kind of out it came and there appears to be it's kind of dark in there we got a hawk family that's moved in here driving the jays crazy she she and he both have been out here i think i may have mentioned it already i don't know what kind they are but if you hear them in the background and you know what they are tell me if you would but anyway so it appears that something is gone here That was her. Not the blue jay. But anyway, something is, some part of this is missing because there are two holes and she's up in the tree over there. I read my bird bath the other morning. So I'm, I'll have to look at this. It may just be that this thing has got rivets on it. Well, I said it did. It doesn't. Yeah, something's definitely broken here. That sounds just like Raymond on Rain Man. Oh yeah, this this is definitely broken. This is definitely broken. This is broken. Oh yeah, yeah. This this is this is no good. This is definitely broken. That's definitely broken. It's definitely broken. I don't think this is any use to us anymore. Thankfully and luckily and fortunately, GM stamped in the part number, so when I go look for one of these, I know which one to look for. It looks like 157-12001. <laughs> Why did they think that would ever work without some kind of a strap on it to keep it from coming down? Anyway, when I'm saying about this thing escalating, I've got other stuff to deal with here, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and take the, see if I can take the dash cluster cover off because it's, uh, it's got its own set of problems. One thing, the uh, emergency brake cable has got to be replaced because the handle's broken off of it. You know, you can't put the handle back on that. So that's there. And then this thing is, appears to be broken in at least a couple different places. And the headlight switch is doing this deal here. So, and that radio, I haven't made my mind up about that radio yet, but I want to get in there and see what kind of situation I got going in there with that. So I think I'll go ahead and just take it all out. Of time off the present. Okay, I'm standing back here at the back of the truck, and this is this goofball microphone that's wired into that radio all the way back in here. <laughs> there it goes. And you got a mystery blue wire coming out from the back of it, and it wouldn't be complete with a cut off speaker wire also coming out going down somewhere who knows where they went i'm pretty sure i know probably probably an amp when you're a young guy you got to have an amp oh it's yeah uh okay so where do we start here Let's start with the worst of it <laughs> we already did start with the worst of it all right, so first thing I noticed, I noticed this thing was loose, this headlight switch. This is quite the headlight switch, too, so it's got a heat sink on it. But I noticed it was loose, and looking at it, and there's glue or epoxy or something on the tabs that at some point may have mounted it to the dashboard. The headlight switch itself looks okay, but there's glue on it. Not supposed to be glue on it. 
And I notice there's a, uh, a metal tab, which is normally used to retain this thing in there, which is uh, still in that. So, and that don't look good. This dash has been out, guaranteed, because it's got some homemade, oh, really everything. They just re-engineer everything. Make it better. So, all right, so walk over and look at this bezel or fascia. So I'm not sure what's going on. I have a good idea, though, that what did go on is this headlight situation is that this stuff is snapped off right here. It's supposed to be, this is supposed to be captive and snapped. They're all snapped. And then that one's totally gone there, and that's where the glue comes in. I don't know what kind of glue that is. It looks like Gorilla Glue to me. And then that snapped off, and this is where the one that we're seeing in the dash, still in the dash, that's where that would go, if it could. And uh, it's about the worst of it. The rest of the clips are still here. This is salvageable, I guess, with some work. The ruby red is not as common, I guess, as the rest of it, but there's a random piece of electrical tape on this. Why is that there? I like the air freshener still in there. I put that in there, actually, because I didn't want it to smell, keep smelling like an old motel in here. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, I guess... Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and just give in to temptation and take that radio out. And, uh, because I just, man, I don't like stuff like that. I guess I'll take the battery cable off before I do that. Probably a good idea. And, you know, I don't know. I'm going to look and see. I could, I'm, I guess I could troop around the junkyard over the weekend and look for all this stuff, but. I don't know. I think everything in there is going to be busted too, but we'll see. I'll make my mind up. I think I'm going to go ahead and... You know how it is. You have to start from scratch. So get all the junk out and then start from ground zero and see what you can do. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get all the garbage I don't like out of this thing. All the random wires. All the old radios. you make it go away. Alright then. I'm losing the light. It's getting a little late in the evening, but I couldn't resist, so let's just see how good our amateur radio installer did here. So first thing I noticed is I called this exactly right. I've been I've had too many of these used vehicles owned by too many younger folks to not know what this is. So this was the wire that was sticking out under the dash there by my feet, cut off, and sure enough, we followed it back up. That's it. Boom. Antenna out. I mean, uh, amp output. That's your RCA, I guess I used to call it. I don't know if it still does. So, the rest of it is a good and a bad story. The good story, which I'm totally impressed with, I have to give them credit. They didn't cut the harness up. They just plugged it in. So, that saved me. But look at the butt splice connectors in here. This would be me at age 20. And a matter of fact, I'll give myself, I'll give myself even a worse recommendation back then. That wouldn't be me at age 20. Me at age 20 would be taping all those together with electrical tape. This would be me probably not till about age 30 doing something like that. So it's a little step up, a little better than what I could have done. But this, this bull bar is going to go. It's a nice radio. I mean, the radio actually does a lot of things, so I'll keep it, but I'm just not, I don't know, I'm just not an aftermarket radio type of person. I mean, the, you know, the radio in this car does everything you need it to do. It's built in, it's real nice, and, you know, the only thing I could think that maybe I may keep it to use in that car is a hidden radio, because you know, the one in it's AM, but I'm not going to put, there's no way I'd cut off one of my you know what's before I'd ever cut the dash to put one of these radios in. No way I would ever do that. So don't worry about that. But you can wire these in 
and kind of hide them like under you know in the in the glove box or something like that so you know we may get into something like that so we have some tunes on on the uh on the highway but anyway i know uh, i've kind of been concentrating on this i have sort of at the expense i've got to get the chrysler moved along there so this is about it i'm gonna have to wait on this stuff for a while because i've got to source some of this but uh, don't don't fear i'm keeping my timetable here so Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and unplug all this, and uh, so I'm going to call it for this day, and uh, it may take a little while before I get back on this, because um, i got stuff to do, and parts to find, and all that. So anyway, I'm rambling. See you in a second. But wait, there's more. All right, so I was looking at this stuff here, and this radio seemed like it was it's in this adapter, which I've seen millions of these things. Pretty nice ones. I actually got like a little clip arrangement to slide this thing in and out of. But first thing I noticed is I captured the wire under there that didn't need to be there, and then they totally neglected to secure this radio into this thing. It's supposed to have, you're supposed to get in there you can come around the back. It's not impossible to do, but you can go in there and kind of get in there once it's installed and, and bend up these little ears in various places, and that's how the radio in, so it doesn't just come out like that. So I guess that was a little more than I wanted to do. So the funny part about this wire, this is another one that I saw hanging around coming out of there. Remember that it was hanging out of the dash? It's I don't know what it is, really. It's no longer connected. <laughs> Note to younger guys, you can do a better job than this putting a radio in. All right. I thought of something a while ago. This is the difference between a 50-year-old's Tahoe and a 20-year-old's Tahoe. One of your old Tahoe has stuff like that going on. You know, they don't mind driving around the busted up interior and busted up seats. And the main thing, the main thing, the difference between a 50 year old Tahoe and a 20 year old Tahoe is mine is sitting level and theirs would be like this. <clears throat> what is that? What is that stuff? What is that? What is this? What's that supposed to be? Did you just get back from Baja running the pre-runner deal? All right, all right, we're back with this thing. I've repositioned it back under my favorite shade tree here. And the weather's pretty nice today, actually. It's not that hot. We've had days that's been really hot and then it's kinda in the middle of that's been days that have been really, really pleasant. So that's pretty good for me. So anyway, we're back on this thing and make a couple notes before we get into this. But um, those hawks I was telling you about that are indeed taking that residence here somewhere over that way. Apparently those are red-shouldered hawks because I sat down one evening and went to the trouble of uh, listening to the sounds at various species of hawks make and that that's down there and that's a red-shouldered hawk to the best of my knowledge so there's a pair of them and they seem to be happy here so i've been kind of giving my songbirds at the bird feeders a little bit of problem but this morning the female i think it was her she was sitting out near there and then one more she's been in the bird bath so <laughs> Anyway, it's another one of those things we're going to have to kind of coexist with each other, but that's that. And then um, <clears throat> you saw that truck sitting there at the garage the other day, that little shop the guy runs over there. I don't know who it is. I don't know him personally, but it's been there a while now on the highway the other day. And apparently that's nothing. It was gone later, so no, no problem. I was just there visiting or something. I hope the guy's enjoying that pickup. It's a good old truck. So he's hopefully enjoying it, and I'm enjoying this. So here's what's going on. I've already taken this dash apart. You saw in the 
last piece of this, I believe. And I had some decisions to make about that. We'll look in here again. So when I took this apart, I was started out taking apart the ashtray, and then as I got into this, I realized that there was some loose looseness in the bezel and, and all that. And uh, so I just want to kind of address that. That's the radio that I took out at it, the aftermarket. And this radio, this, not all the speakers were working either. So it got some things going on, but nothing major, I don't believe. But the ashtray was busted. It was hanging down. It had some tie wraps on it. So I made plans to go ahead and just go to the junkyard today. I went to the one that's down here south of me. Not that many miles away. It's just more of a, it's a unique place to visit because it's a lot more like the old time junkyards. That you used to have to go in and ask them for the part and they'd send some flunky out there to get it but this place lets you walk around and it's uh <laughs> yeah, some days are better than others down there it depends on what the weather's been like but it's there's no organization it's just out there if you can find it good if not come back and try again it's the Results you get you get are directly proportional to the effort you put into it. So if you walk around, what is that? This when this truck sits out here, there's things that run into the side of it. There was a hummingbird flew into the window one 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 afternoon. But anyway, if you walk around that junkyard and you're not prepared and you wear some light shoes like these or something, then worried about the heat or the sun or weeds or cars in the way then you're probably not going to walk out of there with anything but if you go in there like i normally do and prepared for battle which means i wear a pair of depending on like i said what the weather's been like because it's real muddy out there most of the time it's real swampy um, i go with either a pair of shoes heavy shoes or i go with my rubber boots on so I go in prepared for battle, and I did that today, and I came back out with some success. So the main thing is this place is cheaper than anybody around, which is good. And so I walked out of here with a bag full of stuff and my arms full of stuff for $25. So I can't beat that. It's worth it. So, uh, And as an additional bonus today, I got down there, and, and it came a thunderstorm while I was down there. First time I've ever had that happen. So I had to take refuge in a suburban that had been overturned at some point and to crush the part of the roof. So it leaked and <laughs> it's interesting. So, but I had a good time. So basically what I did was the check strap again is broken, but I got that door fixed by the way. I went down to find parts to address some issues. And the one thing was the radio. I'm not going to put any kind of aftermarket radio back in. So I was looking for one of these specific radios that goes in these. Just deal here. It's pretty common, but you can't hardly find them down there. That was the last one that was in there that I know of. And I mean, I covered some weeds and some mud to get to it. So it's not the best kind of shape but it's okay for this this is not a show car so uh i also picked up the back then <clears throat> back then for whatever reason i guess because people were still using cassettes can you believe that you younger folks cassettes in a car <laughs> um, because they were still using some cassettes you could get the this is the regular cassette player and then you could specifically add this CD player, which goes in the little spot under the HVAC controls, which that one's actually the spot the little cup cubby hole's broken. I don't know how they did that, but it's broken. So I picked those up, and I picked the, I think I have the, yeah, I got the correct patch cable, which I need to type that up a little bit better. But I got the patch cable between those two. I hope they work for the money I paid. It ain't a big deal if it doesn't. And so, also, I'm missing a, I'm missing a uh, cover up here for the light. Got this. Got that. And this cable. You might guess what this is. That's the emergency brake release cable, which on mine is broken. 
It's funny because I don't know if this one's been replaced because it was hard to get the handle off and it didn't break. So, and I did get the handle. There you go. It looks like an original handle. It doesn't look like it's been replaced, but I'm pretty sure the one up there is broken. I have to double check that. But and this is amazing here. I don't know how I pulled this off, literally and figuratively. But I got three more of these bezels. There's a bit more hard to pronounce word for this, but we'll call them bezels. Some people in Georgia call them bezels. But anyway, I know at least three of these are broken. I couldn't remember which ones are broken, so I just got the three that were there. And there must be some kind of an art form to taking these off without breaking the clips. So I just gently worked the screwdriver in and kind of started prying up a little bit where I thought the clips were and popped them loose and they came off without breaking. So that's one of these on these trucks that you never seem to be able to find. So I might have one extra. Like I said, I can't remember which one was already here and in good shape. Might be one I've already gotten. Now this these are, oh, it already has it on, okay. Well, I bought two of these grills that are, this is another thing on these trucks, people seem to knock off, and then right after they knock them off, they can't seem to remember where were they. Where'd they go? <laughs> so I bought two of these, and I had to get, there was only one red one that I could find anywhere in there. Red was a very rare color, apparently. Yeah, semi-rare, but there was just like a couple red in tears and there was one blue in here and everything else is gray or tan so i picked up a gray one i'll repaint it but it has this little you know you've seen me make these things out of that material and i got an extra one because i couldn't recall it was in the middle of getting that rainstorm going so i couldn't recall if i had that one in there it's there so we're good and what else Oh yeah, I picked up two rear window switches because initially I thought one was missing, but it's not missing, it's broken. I'm pretty sure that's broken. Oh well, maybe that's broken too, imagine that. I guess I'll be going back to the junkyard again. It's closed tomorrow, but maybe I can get up there during the week. Do I even want to know how that happened. So one thing I'm pretty bad about is, oh yeah, I gotta get another one of those too. One thing I'm pretty bad about is I'm trying to, I go to the junkyard, it seems like, without trying to make a list of everything I need. Okay, so that's the one that's still here, and that's good. So I've got a spare. I'm still going to be missing the driver's side over there. Okay. But there's that. So anyway, I go to the junkyard without making a very good list. I just kind of keep it in my head what I need. And so I forget things. So I forgot that that ashtray right there is broken. And this is it, I think. So it's... A chip out of it, and also I don't know where the lid to it's at. It's gone. It's broken out, I guess. Maybe not. It sure looks like it's been broken out, though. So I think that Suburban down there had one in it. So I can probably round those up, find a door handle. Because I'm just telling you now, I don't care how old the car is or the truck is, I don't ride around with broken stuff in the vehicle. It's either going to be new or light new. It's just how it is. Like that. It might not make any difference to anybody else, but I'm, I fix it. This is how stuff like this gets in this kind of shape. Because these these folks ride around in here and little stuff breaks and little stuff breaks and little stuff breaks. And they, they use that phrase that I can't stand to hear. And that is, I can't be bothered. Well, I can. And then I'll profit from being bothered, hopefully. So what I've decided up here to do is I've priced a, I found a replacement bezel for this and it's a lot, it's not cheap. So I'm considering attempting to fix this one. 
and then try it. Which means also fixing this because I have to order it. I haven't I haven't committed to it yet. So I'm, I'm going to decide on that. If it looks like it's just not going to work, I'll buy one somewhere and install it. So, And another thing too, I figured out back when I had all these just as daily drivers, I never had to fix stuff like this. This is the first one that I've had that I've actually had to go look around in the junkyard for parts for it. And stuff's getting pretty, these things are getting kind of scarce. Well, I, I don't know if that's accurate, but some of the things are getting kind of scarce in there because you can't find any bezels. Everything that breaks on them is gone. You can't find any bezels. You can't find any... Uh, Any door door stuff, all the driver's doors are taken apart. They're all gone. That reminded me. I've, I've got an ashtray. I thought I bought one. Hang on. Yeah, here it is. I was thinking, what in the world? That was the main thing I went after. So, okay. So, this ashtray is out of a newer one. It's the only red one I could find that was not just missing or whatever. But this... This apparently, they changed the design on this after a couple of years. The old style, which may be in here. I think it's not, but let's look. Uh, nope, that would be a negative. So the old style, anyway, I take my word for it. It kind of, it had an assemb this assembly in the back here, this black part, the surround, I guess you could call it clipped into the dash assembly with these little T things that slip in there. And then the door came down as an assembly, like a one big door swung down. And then when you open the door, it had an ashtray and then it had these ports going across those there. Well, I guess, like I said, after a couple of years, GM figured out that that wasn't gonna cut it because these things were breaking because they were under, they were under design for the weight of that big door. So what they did is they came back and just this whole thing, again, clips in. But instead of this big door coming down, you have just a small ashtray with a small door that doesn't go very far. Just enough to get your stogie in there. And then you have these doors that open up for the power ports. So it's a lot better design. So I think that this one will fix, fit into that dashboard. I don't... I always, I always try to remember when I'm thinking about whether, without researching it, I always try to just keep in mind, I thought, you know what, car makers are not going to go to any more effort or expense than they have to. So if they're going to be forced to redesign something, they're going to do it as cheaply as possible and so it will fit into the existing dash structure. So I'm pretty confident I'm going to be able to plug and play on that. So anyway, nobody will be the wiser, will they? <laughs> all right well i guess i'm going to spend a while now cleaning up on stuff and uh that radio is going to be a, it's going to be locked because this is one of these theft lock deals and i'll tell you it's kind of <laughs> you know it's just it's one of these things that makes you scratch your head they designed this radio to be theft lock so if the power gets interrupted to it the battery back at the battery constant i guess then it locks and it won't work until you make it spit out a couple codes and then you have to call someplace and get those codes to tell them the codes and they tell you the code to enter to get it to get it to work again but the whole problem is this radio doesn't even bolt in all you do is to get the thing out and once that bezel is off up there which takes no no tools it just clip unclips and pulls away and you're in you just simply on each side here sorry you just push down on this tab and it kind of locks down once they're down you just pull the radio out no bolts no nothing i mean it's good it's good if you're you know a diyer like myself or anybody else just replacing the radio but are you kidding me you went to the trouble of making this a theft lot radio just because you didn't go to the trouble of bolting the thing even in. Some people do some of the smartest, dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. Because if you put, look, 
why why wouldn't you take like put a couple brackets like one on each side and put some of those theft resistant you know those torx head screws or bolts whatever you want to call them that have a little protrusion in the middle of them so you have to have the special tool for it or whatever some kind of oddball you know a triangular slot not to call it, it's not a slot but you know a hole on the end of it you could do that see this thing comes right out too same way see it, it was not to make it easy to get out it was to make it easy to get in that's what it is all right guys enough yakking so i'm gonna sit here and enjoy just cleaning this stuff up and work on ahead with this trying to try and get this thing all wrapped up because I got plenty of other stuff to do after this. Well, I just got confronted with something that I had been pretty successful at blocking out of my memory since I mostly stopped fooling with fixing up newer stuff. And that is my old time redneck pastime of taking a heated up cigarette lighter and sticking it on to something plastic. I don't know, I had some other car, same way. It was like that. Somebody had taken the cigarette lighter and had just been sticking it on the dashboard. You know, I think that might have been the same one. What car was that? That was sure a nasty car. I almost want to say that Toyota Echo, but I don't think it was it. There was some car I had that somebody had written something like on the dashboard with a paint marker, like some gal some redneck gal loves some redneck guy forever. I don't know. Can't remember that far back now. But, you know, people that do something like this, I think there's some more that would take it and just go right on their arm. All right, well, I've spent the last hour or so working on this radio, and it's not good news. <laughs> so we got this thing plugged in. Not that one. I got this original one. I was out of another junkyard vehicle. Plugged in and everything, and it fit fine and plugged up fine and got it going, and it worked for about, it wasn't locked, I don't understand that, but it worked for about a minute, and that was it. So, this one. When I took it apart and looked at the wiring job here that they did, I discovered that, let me take that key back out so it quits that. I discovered that they had not, for whatever reason, someone had unhooked the left side channels. You know, you have two wires for each. So there's, you know, you got four, it's assumed to be four. This, this truck actually has, uh, how many speakers? One tweeter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight speakers. It's actually got two that I forgot about in the roof up there. But anyway, so they had, for whatever reason, disconnected two of the left channel left side speakers. So none of that was working. So I got it as a test. I hooked, sorry, I hooked that radio back up, wired it back together temporarily. And tested all these speakers out and this one came back to life and the left door speaker works the right front door speaker doesn't work except for the tweeter and the right rear does not work uh, right front works so what three or four speakers not working so I'm going to kind of look into that I've got to take these door panels apart anyway because they're, some of the stuff like is broken so might as well just go ahead and get into it so I think I'm just going to eat some humble pie on this. I'm not crazy about these radios, but this one works. It's difficult to use. It's stupidly complex. But it's got Bluetooth in it, apparently, and stuff. So it's, it'll be all right. I'm, I'm going to probably stick that CD player back in there since I accidentally <laughs> broke the bin taking it out. I think I'm just going to go ahead and just say the heck with it. I'm going to take that radio and re redo all the wiring on it. So it's nice and safe. Solder all the connections. Take all that crap there out. So, and just just use it. It'll fit. It'll go in there. Everybody will be happy. Because I'm not going to, I'm not going to take any more time or money to try to get one of those original radios working. It's not worth it. So, 
because you never know when one may work for another minute and crap out and plus every time the radio has to come out that way has this bezel <laughs> bezel has to come off and this bezel is not in good enough shape to ever come off again if it doesn't have to so this is it the decision has been made we're just going to go back with that radio oh look at my stash i thought i had another radio someplace that was maybe a little bit easier to use i'll go in there and i think actually maybe not because i think i put it in that truck i sold that or traded off but all right move on more interesting discoveries here and it's like good discoveries just interesting discoveries first thing i got the door panel off over here and the reason why the speaker doesn't work is because it's not there uh, I don't know why the painter's tape is on here either. But something looks odd about this. Like this truck's had this, some, I think it's had some door handles replaced because these are supposed to be red, aren't they? The other ones are red. That's interesting. Looks like the hardware's been taken out. I don't know how those come out. I gotta figure out how we're looking up. But the uh, little lights weren't working because apparently none of them have bulbs in them anymore. And so, you know that door panel, like I said, was loose. So it's got these you know, interesting style of fasteners. There's one that's actually there. But there's several of them missing and broken stuff. So, yeah. You know, somebody just ham-fisted it. I guess they had that thing. They had to have it off, get the speaker out. Why would somebody do that? Why would somebody just take a speaker out and put the door panel back on? I'm telling you, people are scary weird. And I popped this panel. You have to pop this control panel out. And I want to deal with it anyway because one thing, it feels like it's a little loose. All this stuff here. I'm not sure it's supposed to be that loose, but this mirror switch is intermittent. So you have to really fool around with it to get it to work. And it's got some kind of, I see it's some, got some sort of a, looks like a seal or something, weather seal on it. So something's up with that. So I'll pop that out. That's a little tweeter. Something just sounds loose in here. Of course, it's an old GM, so then got the right side door panel off, the right rear one that the speaker didn't work. But the speaker's actually there, and it doesn't look like it's blown out. But this is the uh, this is the power window switch that is broken, and apparently it got pulled apart by force. I guess when they took the door panel off, I'm sure the door panel's been off. Uh, because I think that one's got a replacement door door handle in it too. I'll go show you in a second. But uh, if you look in here, there's a cracked out place. That's a neat term. I never use that term, but I think I'll start using that. Right there in the corner, it's cracked out. So I uh, surmise what happened was somebody had no understanding. Are you ready for this? Somebody had no understanding of how to pop the the power window switch out of the door panel which is very easy i mean a third grader could do it probably you got just a spring clamp you pop it up it pulls out comes out you don't break anything apparently they yanked on it till it broke and just put it back together but see this that door over there's got a red what i'm talking about that that background over there see that one's got a red background and that one's got a red background this has got neutral, I guess, and that one's got neutral. So I think this thing's had a couple door panels put on, uh, <laughs> door handles put on it. Yeah, yeah, I think it has. So anyway, I'll investigate that further. Like I said, none of the none of the the door courtesy lights had bulbs in them. That's no shock, no surprise, and no shock. So this door panel, I don't believe it needs to come off. It's all together. 
feels all right. It's not super tight in the spot over here, but I'm not going to worry about it because this stuff is too fragile. This is the one that's actually here, this thing here. Um, I can live with it. So, let's see. One of these. Yeah, this right hand door. This is the one that's all the all the problems are happening in because the door lock doesn't work. Let me make sure of that. Let me lie. Yeah, it's not working. I was gonna say lie out my ass, but I'm not. It doesn't work. Well, back to the junkyard. It looks like. Or eBay. And it broke right around those light bulbs. Cracked out. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for the interior on this. I've got a couple more things to do. I'm still waiting on the parts, but I'll give you a quick glimpse of this. Here we need, got to have some hinge work done there at some point. But got these door panels back together. Worked on those quite a bit. Put some new handles in that matched. And uh, still waiting to put, get the paint for my grill there. I uh, put all the dash back together, including my new ashtray that I got from the junkyard, the lighter style. I uh, put the new emergency brake release cable in. Put the handle back on it. What else? Tested that mirror. That mirror works. Got the compass in it. It works. All the lights in here now work. Got the lens back on that. Got all four of the door lights working. All four of them did not work because the bulbs were out of them. They'd fallen out. So, of course, you know about the seat. I already did a video on this seat. And uh, I have to see what's up with the seat belt here because it will not turn the light off. The light stays on. It acts like the thing's not buckled up, you know it is. Like I said, I had to replace a lot of things on these door panels, so I had to find ashtrays and some switches. This is one of the original handles and stuff, so it's still kind of pink, but I did the other side also, put a new um, inside handle and matching brand new bezel and all that good stuff on it, so it looks really good. Of course, you know, I fixed the door back here Still got to do the speakers. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them yet. This is all together now. Works good. I decided not to do the, the power lock motor right yet. I'll, maybe one day I'll get into that, but it's not going to be into this door enough to even worry about it. So, so I got this one back together. You got the grill back on there. All this stuff. Those parts are pretty well available easily. And cheaply that's good i uh, still got to do this seat this seat is a wreck probably as bad or worse than the other one probably just as bad as the other one so i get ready to do that but anyway so that's going to wrap this up for this video it's been a long one I hope you have some popcorn or had some popcorn because this is the end of it isn't it so probably three quarter of you three quarter of you probably need to see this so we've got a do some more stuff to this as we go along. It's, it's uh, I think I've got to get some tires put on it and get a front end alignment, do a little bit of front end work on it. it needs end links. Uh, I think it could use an idler arm and a pitman arm. Do those, get it lined up. And one thing for sure, it needs an exhaust system put on it because it's leaking a lot of exhaust. And it's making me sick. So that needs to be done. But otherwise, we are, it's roadworthy. I've driven it quite a bit now. It seems to be doing well. It's got to have some air conditioning repairs done on it. Tried to repair that cheaply, and it wasn't having it. But, hey. All right, guys. Well, just want to uh, go ahead and get this posted up for you. And uh, I'll take this in now, and I'll get all these clips together. I'll cut out the good parts and discard those, and the rest of it I'll put together for a video for you for YouTube. So anyway, hope you uh, enjoyed following along with this stuff. It's been fun working on this. Um, been really busy right now. It's our busy time of year. We just went through a changeover and stuff going on. But you know, I sure do enjoy getting to do this kind of stuff. 
be thankful for every day you have. And anyway, uh, we're going to, I think in the next video after this, we're going to get back on the Chrysler. I've been filming on it also, all that stuff going on there, getting back to the point of getting it put back together here soon. So stay tuned for that. I think that's what we're going to do next. Give you a break from the old toe. Thanks everybody for watching and please uh, subscribe if you haven't and leave your comments. I'm slow about reading them sometimes, but I love them. I mean, I see them when they get posted. Sometimes I just don't have the, t the time or the chance or whatever to reply to them, but please rest assured that I have seen your comment and I really do appreciate those. So uh, we'll be seeing you on the next one. Everybody stay cool. Later.